Hello and welcome to the Southern Stars Christmas edition of our coronavirus podcast. I'm the news editor, Siobhan Cronin. And I'm life and community editor, Emma Connolly. And this week we have a book special called The Best Book I Read This Year. Now with Christmas coming, what better gift is there than a book? There really is a book out there for everybody, you know. As has often been said, if you don't like books, you just haven't met the right one yet. And if reading isn't your thing, there are plenty of other books you can get lost in, from comic books to art books to cookery, gardening, puzzle books, and so much more. The same rules apply when buying a book as a gift. Don't think if your friend or relative likes books or not, find out what they do like and find a book to cover that interest. Exactly, Siobhan. So in this week's podcast, we have decided to give you some of our own favourite recommendations from this year's crop of books and what a choice we've had. But we also have some very special guests, all who were previous guests on this podcast, who have popped in to tell us what was the best book they read this year. We've given them a broad spectrum to choose from, any book published any year, but read this year during this most unusual year of 2020. We also have some well-known bestsellers from from around West Cork giving us their own particular recommendations. So this week's podcast is packed with guests and chat. So let's get started. Well, Emma, I have chosen my top three books for this year, and I'm going to start with a book that I really didn't expect to be so impressed with. Um, This is a book that is locally produced and actually was published by the Southern Star. So just hands up there. And that's the reason why I came across it, really, because we were doing a little piece on it for the paper. And it is called now I've a virtual background going on here for anyone who's watching. So it's kind of a little bit difficult to get some of the things on screen, but you can see that. Yeah. So who was Johnny Wheels? So this is a book by Victor Sullivan, a local writer. Uh, I think Victor's based in Cork City now, but he has lots of links down here. And the reason Victor wrote this book was because um, he came across a revolver in a field near Castletown Bear um, when he was nine years old. And this led to his discovery of the story behind the revolver. Now, the book opens with this fantastic line. From the age of nine, Johnny Gill's family tried to keep him hidden. Now, like you just have to keep reading when you see that. And it's the remarkable story of Johnny Wheels. Johnny Wheels Gill. He was a cripple who became a legend in his native Beira. And he was Victor's great uncle. And the reason he became a legend was um, from a very young age, they, the family really felt they had to hide him because cripples in those days, of course, were kind of unusual and a little bit of shame attached and embarrassment. But Johnny had other plans and Johnny was very feisty and he was great with his hands. Um, and he got a local tailor to make him a leather harness, which helped him drag himself around and which Johnny mischievously called the Cromwell. Um, and then he had his own big uh, creation, a contraption, which was made with discarded metal found around the farm and taken from a local blacksmith's yard. And he called this device his Eureka. And it helped to propel him forward with the help of horses. So he'd, he had a little a rope. And if horses were going past with carts, he used to throw the rope, catch it on the cart, and he'd get a little free spin into town or back home again or whatever. Now, he also was a real mischievous little character. He was very, very witty, very funny. Um, and he went on to have, very, have a very good, fulfilling life. And he was a local craftsman and he made furniture and he made inventions. And it's just a brilliant, brilliant read. And I really think this book is really going to go places. It was actually published at the very end of 2019, but it really only started to pick up there at the start of this year. It's gone into a second print run and it's been sold out all over the place. So I really highly, for anyone, anyone in your family who likes history, who likes humour, yeah, who likes just a little bit of mischief. I really, really enjoyed that book, Emma. Yes, um, and available locally, obviously. It's available in, in lots of local bookshops um, and um if you do have a problem, contact us here. I'm sure we'll be able to get um, a copy out to you as well. So now we're going to take a listen to one of our guests' choices. And our first guest is Marie Mulholland, who joined us earlier this year. And she's from the West Cork Women Against Violence Project. So here is Marie's recommendation for a book. So my book of the year, which was really my book of the lockdown, um, was Hilary Mantel's final instalment of The Life of Trump, Thomas Cromwell. Um, the final book is called The Mirror and the Light. It's about 900 pages long, so it was a cracker of a book to be reading during lockdown. And um, 
in it, uh, Thomas really comes to the, his final days or his final year. Um, you can't possibly keep on massaging the ego of a tyrant and a sociopath, um, as many in America have found out with Donald Trump. And, and Henry VIII is very much a Donald Trump kind of figure, although he's got more brains than Donald Trump. Um, and Cromwell had been his Jared Kushner, really. Um, is Mr. Fix-It, doing things for him, keeping him happy, um, sorting stuff out for him with his staff and with his uh, foreign affairs, etc. Um, but eventually Thomas too falls foul of the of the, the regent and uh, he ends up in the Tower of London in this final book. But what is wonderful about Mattel's storytelling and her writing and her research, historical research, is that it would have been so easy to paint Cromwell as this just very evil man but she paints him in shade and light and shadow and you get to understand his motivations which are basically that he came from an impoverished background and became the close acquaintance of the king um, someone from his background never got that close to royalty um, and that made Thomas Cromwell a lot of enemies in the court of King Henry VIII. Right, so Hilary Mantel there was um, Marie's choice. Oh. So Emma, what's your first pick? Okay then, so my I'm going to start with um, this book. Um, it's a book called Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup. Bit of a bit of a hefty title. It's by um, an investigative journalist, a Pulitzer Award winning journalist, John Carreyrou. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Um, so it was written in 2018. So I'm thinking possibly some of our listeners might already be well up to speed on it. So I'm coming to it a bit late, but I'm so glad um, I came across it. It's actually a friend of mine recommended it to me. I think there was a thing maybe... We were a good bit into the first lockdown and I had had enough of Netflix. I'd had enough of Instagram. I'd had enough. Banana of bread. <laughs> Banana bread. I'd had enough and I needed something. So she um, actually sent it to me and um, she saved me, really. So <clears throat> it basically, it's a true story. Um, it tells a story of a young American woman called Elizabeth Holmes, a college dropout who went on to set up this multi billion dollar biotech um, startup company based entirely on lies and deception. Fooled everybody. Um, it's a blood testing company. Fooled everyone, uh, the biggest brains in Silicon Valley, and then it all just collapsed. Basically, thanks to um, John, the, the writer here, as he he basically um, exposed it all. Exposed it all. Thank you. Exactly. So um, it's why do I love it? It's app like you know I didn't think I would love it. Like like it does sound potentially a little bit dull, but it's far from it. It's so gripping. And um, like I said, I was kind of book where I was kind of like trying to sneak away during the day and and get back to you know I, I was kind of resenting work housework family I didn't I didn't want any deviations I didn't I wanted to go to bed early and I didn't want to get up so and then when it end I never wanted it to end basically so I know I sound I sound well. maybe but it, it, it just had me it gripped me and the good news is well for me anyway I think um according to according to the back there Hollywood is turning it into a movie so I was just going to say it sounds it's like all, perfect even the it's name got all, it's got all the ingredients yeah. um so yeah, I, 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 it's totally riveting. I'd really recommend it to anyone. I mean, it's not complicated. And um, um, you know, you don't have to sort of have such an quiet room and, and and you know keep track on all the characters and all the rest because there's a lot going on. So I'd recommend it to anyone really who just wants to get stuck into a good story. Um, and you don't necessarily have to have any it's particular a bit of escapism. Mm. Yeah, it's total escapism. And the fact is though that it's actually a true story, which makes it even more gripping. So. Um, bad blood yeah totally loved it I would um, totally recommend it you won't Great. Be now Emma um, as you said we, we've asked some booksellers around the area to give us their own recommendations and Cahill O'Donovan from the bookshop in Skibbereen was on and he has given us three really excellent recommendations his first one is one that's on my wish list too it's 32 words for field and that's Moncon McGann's book. I think it's got quite a lot of publicity already. Um, he's a real culture expert, an Irish speaker, a, a wonderful orator. If you've ever heard him on the radio, he's on quite a lot. Um, so uh, Cahill says, in addition to the old Irish words for field, this book references a whole range of other words in Irish with nuances and subtitles, which are woven into the ancient culture, magic, mythology, mystique and mystery, which is the Irish landscape. So how could you say no to that? His second choice is The Patient Assassin by Anita Anand. 
and I think she's a, a Canadian writer. I could be wrong there. It's published by Simon and Schuster. It's 1750. I should have said McCom McGann's book is 1999. This is 1750, The Patient Assassin. And he says, this book has a parallel with Bloody Sunday in Croke Park in November 1920, because in April 1919, at the behest of an Irishman, Sir Michael Dwyer, Lieutenant Governor of Punjab province, he was originally from Tipperary, the military blocked the main entrance to a walled garden in Amritsar and began shooting. Hundreds fell dead, and 20 years later, Michael Dwyer was shot dead in Westminster by the patient assassin. So that sounds like a, a really good one for the for the times that are in it now at the moment as well. And his third choice is a book that's going to be coming up a lot today, I think. Um, oh, it yeah. is the sports book of the year. I'm going to be talking a little bit about it later. So we'll just run through it here. It's <laughs> Champagne Football by Mark Ty and Paul Rowan, published by Penguin Random House, 1599. This award-winning book, says Cahill, chronicles the extravagant spending by John Delaney, chief executive of the FAI, and the message there for every organisation, whether state or voluntary community, is that there needs to be oversight, transparency and accountability in all dealings at committee or board level, and that the cult of personality is best avoided. So we'll be getting back to that one again later. And now let's have a listen to what Skibbereen school teacher and environmental campaigner Brendan McCarthy has recommended. I recommend two books for uh, anyone to read from 2020. My first one is a sports book by a hero of mine called Barry Garrity. His book is True Colours. And the second one is Night Boat to Tangier by Kevin Barry. Now, a good one there from Brandon. Now, Emma, you also have recommendations from Trish Kerr in Kerr's bookshop in Clonakilty. I do indeed now. So anyone who knows Trish um, will know that she is absolutely passionate about books. Um, and, you know, any anytime I'm going on holidays back in the days when we could go on holidays you could go straight into Trish and you know just literally say give me your recommendations and she she totally knows um what you know what suits who so her her I was very curious to hear her her top pick so her first one is The Promised Land by Barack Obama um I haven't read it but it's on my list so anyway Trish says she's admired um the former president from the first time she heard him speak publicly many years ago and says his book does not disappoint. It's very personal and beautifully written account of history in the making and she says it reads easily. So second choice is Chances Are by Richard Rousseau. Trish says this kept her up late into the night, always a good sign of a book. It's a real page turner. It's a story about the complex power of friendship set in Martha's Vineyard. Three friends are forced to revisit an event from childhood, um, which is the starting point. Good reading with comedy and suspense, says Trish. So um, that sounds like another great option. And finally, and yeah, this is another one that's, gonna, that's popped up quite a few times. Um, the Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie Maxey. So I think this is gonna, this is top of lots of people's um, gift list this Christmas. Trish says she loved the drawings here, the wonderful art, the moving, powerful and down to earth messages on each page. So much so that she sent um, a copy to each of her three daughters as a Christmas present this year. So that's an endorsement, I think. Trish says, I know that they will share it with their young kids, children, and it will adorn bookshops in their homes for many years. So that's that's a nice one. And that's um, that's yeah, that's Trish's third choice. So as she said, three very different books picked for different reasons, but um, three that I'm going to follow up on myself. Um, so now, okay, next up, we are going to Washington. We are going to listen to what RTE's Washington correspondent Brian O'Donovan has been reading this year. Hello, it's Brian O'Donovan here in Washington. The best book I read all year is, unsurprisingly, a book all about the Trump presidency. It's Bob Woodward's Rage, a great look into what's been going on in the White House over the last four years from one of America's most famous and respected journalists. Great. Well, I'd love to read that book myself. Um, now, Emma, my second choice was actually a tie between two books which were set in West Cork. Um, the first one is, they're both actually award winners this year in the Irish Book Awards. The first one is um, After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. If anyone is watching, they might be able to see it there. And um, that is in a tie with Graham Norton's book, uh -huh. Home Stretch. <laughs> yeah. Now, I loved both these books. They're both very, very different. Um, but of course, when a book is set in a place where you're living, it has that little extra quality, I think. 
because you spend your time trying to see, you know, if you recognize any of the characters or especially any of the locations. And like both those writers have said that they um, definitely do draw from their own environments. And both books were written in West Cork as well. So it, it is a little bit of an extra um, a bonus there, I think. Now, Home Stretch it starts with a car crash at a roundabout in a small town in West Cork where the driver survives, his, a lot of his friends are killed, and then it goes on to what happened to him after that. And I've heard Graham Norton talking about this, you know, and he's read several similar court cases, and he said it always kind of, it always stuck with him, but very often the driver survives. And he often wonders what happens when you're that young, you make a mistake, but the mistake you make is that you've killed your friends or you've killed your parents' friends' children, you know, so it has resonances right through the whole family. Um, and so he follows this guy, Connor, through his life and what happens to him next. And a little added uh, nuance to the whole plot is that Connor is gay in Ireland in the 80s and he doesn't want to come out. Or he feels he can't. So he leaves Ireland for various because of the car crash, because of what he's struggling with internally. He goes to uh, um, England first, then he moves on to New York and then. And then it all comes back to haunt him, his choices, his decisions, and then, you know, links back to the family home in Cork and stuff. So I won't tell you any more, but it's a really good read. I have three quarters of the way through, so it's going to be tough. Yeah. Don't go there. No, but I, I mean, I'm enjoying it like every, like, yeah. The oh, no, it's, it's, it's a great read no more than like it's his third novel now and I've enjoyed all of them um this one's quite different because as he says he puts a little bit of his own experience into this one about you know being a young gay man in Cork and wanting to go to the big city and find out what's there so um and then after the silence by Louise O'Neill is like it, it's equally riveting um it's set a murder happens you know Christmas on an island um, but she has kind of loosely said is based a little bit on Cape Clear, not that there are any grisly murders in Cape Clear, but, you know, from the landscape on that, um, she would be very familiar with that island. So she sets her novel there on an island and they, you know, they get the ferry back to Baltimore, basically, and to and fro. So you're watching the whole time to see if you recognize any little locations. Um, so there's a murder. Um, who? It's a whodunit. But then there's like in the background, there's like this um, domestic violence going on. There's a lot of innuendo on the island about various families and, you know, their backgrounds. And um, again, I won't delve into it too much, but it's it's definitely a psychological thriller. It's much more nuanced than you'd expect when you start reading it. You think it's going to be a light murder mystery? Not at all. You really get in deep into the characters. And like, it's, it's no wonder she's won a big award for that this year. So um, well done to Louise and well done to Graham. Yeah. And it's hard to choose. If I had to choose one of them, I, I, I don't think I could. I'd just get both, get both. <laughs> You're getting an extra one in there. That's not fair. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so um, I would recommend that for yourself as a little treat or your mom, your granny, your cousin, anyone. It's like, it's really wide ranging. Um, um, material there I think now let's take a video from who was our very first podcast guest and that's teacher Emer Downing she's from Skibbereen she was based in Bergamo initially which of course is really badly hit by the pandemic back in March or April and so Emer's been doing a lot of reading so let's have a listen here to her recommendation hello from Bergamo in Italy my favorite book that I read this year was The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn it's a psychological thriller and I just couldn't put it down. I read the whole thing straight through in six hours. Great recommendation there from Emer. Thank you. I must follow up on that. So my second choice one is um, More Than a Woman by Caitlin Moran. Now, I have to say, I have always thought that I didn't like Caitlin Moran at all. Um, I always thought that she was a bit loud, you know, a little bit in your face, a bit, uh, yeah, just not. Gosh, I think is the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah me not for me at all but anyway it turns out like most things I was completely wrong I heard her being interviewed I thought maybe it was Claire Byrne or something during the summer and um yeah I just I don't know she just really kind of appealed to me maybe it was uh the, that particular day or something anyway so much so that I, I I was inspired to go and um get her book um which she describes as which she says in the back join me for 24 hours in the life of the average woman so um I really liked it I have to say now I have to say I haven't read all of it because it's kind of book that's split into these nice little chapters so you can dip in and dip out mm. um, 
which makes it, you know, just very accessible. So yeah, I really liked it. It's laugh out loud funny in lots of places, which is all, always a good sign. And, um, you know, it's, it's a good sign, yeah. And definitely made me feel like I wasn't um, alone in some of my craziness of being a woman, which is another, another benefit. Um, now, some of it is a bit cliched. I mean, look, I'll give her that. So she has questions like, why is, word, why is wine turned against you in middle age? You know, who's looking after the children? How to make sex less boring? And she's a whole chapter on that about having maintenance sex with her husband, uh, you know, every so often just to keep things going, which is, you know, a bit cliched, but look, it's funny. Um, what are men- Pretty real too. <laughs> pretty real. That's me. Yeah, you said it. Um, uh, what are men really thinking? And she says they're probably thinking nothing. What are women thinking? Everything, Everything. you know, mm. working on a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, a backup plan D that we just can't stop thinking. So that was a little reassuring as well. well that, that's so- spot on, Emma, because um, my husband was looking off into the distance the other night and I thought, oh, gosh, what is he thinking? I said, what What are you thinking? And he said, I'm thinking, are Kevin going to win the football tonight? And I thought, OK. <laughs> That's that's the difference between a man and women. Totally, and if we and she, there's one funny line actually. I should have it marked. Said like, show me a woman. It's something like, show me a woman um, who's hoovering and um, frowning at the same time, who isn't thinking about what's going to happen to her niece in 30 years time when her husband leaves her penniless or something like that. And she's trying to figure out a scenario for that. So something like that. But she, I think she kind of gets that spot on. So there's lots of funny bits. Like I said, some are a bit like, you know, roll your eyes. But mm. And then there's, then what I wasn't expecting was a whole serious side to her, uh, to the book um, and to her revealing it up from her life. She's got two teenage daughters, one of whom um, is thankfully recovered from a serious eating disorder. And she made several attempts to take her own life, which obviously um, is about as terrifying as it can get. Mm-hmm. Um, she doesn't shy away from kind of going in. I mean, she could probably have written the whole book on that, but yeah. she obviously not to so but she, she gives a fair bit of detail saying you know how she always thought when her children were teenagers that that would be the easy bit that you know she'd be out the other end but in fact it was the hardest bit and she had never expected that and um, so um yeah that that's what I wasn't expecting and that kind of just mm. brings another element to the book that it's not kind of all kind of glib and um, yeah and so look I enjoyed it more than I said more than I expected definitely um shows that I actually have, need to have an open mind because I do like her um I, and I'm going to finish it um, for sure. So I'd recommend this, like I said, to any woman who wants to feel a little bit less crazy and to any man who wants to know what makes a woman crazy. So more or less everybody should have this by their bedside. So as a little reference point to keep them going. So um, yeah, Caitlin, uh, more and more than a woman is my number two. So we are going to move now so to our next bookseller's recommendations. We're going to Bandon. We're going to Jerry Fitzgerald in Bandon Books. Um, who's shared his top three for 2020. So he is going in um, at number one with a sporting book, Larry Tom- Believe, um, Larry Tompkins, which is written by Dennis Hurley. Jerry says, a unique insa- insight into how one man can overcome many obstacles to reach his potential in his chosen sport. Um, a wonderful life journey of ups and downs from Kildare to New York and on to Castlehaven to the steps of Hogan Stand. Croke Park as captain of Cork footballers in the magical year of the double. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, I obviously am not a mad GA fan, but certainly this book is coming highly recommended from lots of people. So I, I think um, that's a glowing endorsement there. His number two is same as yours, um, Siobhan, After the Silence by uh, Louise O'Neill. He said it's a real like who done it from West Cork, a page turner and a mind blower as we try to picture the various characters living and what he says it could be Sherman or Cape Clear. So I think we're all agreed on that. And number three, and it's one that I have um, on the go myself at the moment as well, where the Crawdads sing by Delia Owens. Um, he, uh, Jerry said they've recommended the book to like over 200 customers and a huge number of people have come back to thank them so um, yeah I'm halfway through it Where I, yeah it's I, I'm enjoying it have you read it Siobhan it's good no um, it's another one on yeah. my list all right I'm not I have to admit um, probably because I've got a poor attention span I'm not a great one for lengthy kind of descriptive pieces so I'm mm. kind of t- maybe skipping a little pay- few pages here and there but, <laughs> cheating, <laughs> cheating. <laughs> but it's obviously um that's just me I mean it's yeah it's it's so it's a bestseller on the board so I just, yeah. yeah that one this should be on everyone's list as well so there's Jerry's three thank you for sharing those Jerry from Bandon Books 
And now here's the pick of two of our more podcast guests, guests from this summer, Kevin Cullinan, who is head of communications at Cork Airport, uh, followed by RTE's sports very lovely Jackie Hurley. One of the books that I got to read this year was The Tattooist of Outreach by Heather Morris, which was a really compelling read and once again shows man's inhumanity to man. And the other great book that I got to read this year was Champagne Football by Mark Tighe and Paul Owen, The Fortunes of John Delaney as CEO of the FAI. A thumping great read and some great investigative journalism. Hiya, Jackie Hurley here. Well, my favourite book this year is Champagne Football by Mark Ty and Paul Rowan of the Sunday Times for all the work that they did around the John Delaney controversy and everything that happened with the FAI this year. And I think it's just really, really well written. And while some of it we already knew from their journalism work that they put in the newspaper, I think when you just read it chronologically in the in the book and you see it for what it is, I think it's just all the more startling. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. It's already been named Sports Book of the Year it might even be the overall sport the overall book of the year for a lot of people but it, it was just a phenomenal read really well researched and really well done and uh, it's definitely the one that I have enjoyed reading the most this year it's been a lot of good sports books but it's definitely the one that stands out head and shoulders over the rest right well there was another recommendation in that for champagne football which is appropriate because it was my number three book um so it's just a little uh, look at the cover there. It's a um, lovely gold cover to reflect all the money, I think, that was lost by the FAI. Now, I am not a re- I'm not big into sport. I'm not really a reader of sports books. But there was just something about this book that really caught my eye and the whole fact John Delaney. Now, when I saw John Delaney stepping out in Saipan to kind of give the FAI's position in that major Mick McCarthy versus Roy Keane debate with debacle years ago, you know, from that day on, I, I, there was something about John Delaney I didn't quite like. And I often think there should be more women on boards of companies because I think we have a sixth sense about things that men just don't have. So I never liked this guy. Um, And God knows I I was well justified when I read this book. It is an absolute brilliant page turner. Um, Like it's like porn for accountants, basically. But uh, everyone is going to love this book because even if you know nothing about sport, just the sheer um, machismo that runs through the pages, the arrogance, the pomposity you know, all the stuff that um, very like John Delaney is a lot in common with Trump, really. You know, he, he really thought that he was um, invincible and that he could, you know, make decisions behind the board's backs and, you know, that they'd roll along with them. And for a long time they did. But this is a real book of forensic accounting research. It's an absolute tour de force by these two guys, two uh, well-known journalists in Ireland. Mark Ty is a young guy, but he's already won a load of awards for news reporting. And um, I, I just couldn't put it down. And I passed it on to my husband there a few weeks ago. And uh, the bookmark here in the middle of it, he's in the middle of it still. And every so often he turns to me in bed and he says, do you remember the time that so-and-so or the Johnny Giles Foundation? Do you remember? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've read the book. I've read the book. And he is just loving it as much as I did. And uh, it keeps popping up. I think it's an absolutely brilliant book. Um, and just well done. And I'm so proud of these two guys. And I think they did it while they were holding down jobs. And I'm just so envious, so envious. If there was a Pulitzer Prize in Ireland, I think this would win it. So I would just highly, highly recommend that book for anyone. Your dad would love it. Your brother would love it. Your sister would love it. You'd love it. So just go out and buy it. Support Irish journalism. (laughs) It cost me 16 euros 50 and it was well worth, well worth it. And I totally did not expect that when I, when I started reading it. So now, Let's have a recommendation from none other than Oscar winning film producer and one of our guests earlier in the year, David Putnam. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Good. Hello, I'm David Putnam. The book I'd seriously recommend is this, The Upswing by Robert D. Putnam. Not because he's a namesake of mine, although his name's spelled differently, but because it is a remarkable book. This guy's written, I think, three books that I thoroughly enjoyed. The most famous was Bowling Alone. It charts the past hundred years of how we moved from a society that went from being extremely selfish, the end, certainly the end of the 19th century, to beginning to believe in each other and trust each other and work for each other, right the way through the early part uh, and mid 20th, uh, to what began to collapse in the late 60s, the what we term the me generation. And the fact that it is still possible for us to recapture 
and reinvent ourselves. We don't have to be Trump clones. And this book makes it clear that, frankly, it's not part of the human condition to be a Trump clone. So I'm loving this book, and I would thoroughly recommend it to anybody. The Upswing by Robert Putnam. Brilliant, very most interesting. Um, so let's take another recommendation from another recent guest and wellness guide author, Bibi Baskin. One of my favorite books this year, The Six Traits of Self-Leadership by Irishman Michael Daly. You learn a lot from this book, I did. And one of the secrets of success is those people, they take the time and invest the energy into setting out just where they want to be. Michael Daly, The Six Traits of Leadership. Well done, BB. I enjoy that, um, I have to say. Um, so my third and final recommendation to one, I have gone with, um, for the year that's in it, a cookbook. Now, I'm actually supposed to have a ban on buying any more cookbooks because I have just got a, a very silly amount of cookbooks, most of which I never use at all, basically. Mm. I um, think everybody does, Emma. I'm uh, the same. I have a whole I have a whole press in the kitchen of cookbooks, and I'd say I use three of them all the time, and the rest don't get a look in. Uh, no, what is it? It's about, there's something about the, like... The beautiful. Of, yeah, we're just easily seduced, aren't we? Mm. But... Um, so the one I have, have got um, is No Fuss Vegan, Everyday Food for Everyone by Roz Purcell. So like I said, um, it was basically just the loveliness of it that kind of sucked me in because I'm, I'm not a vegan at all. I mean, I love the idea of being a vegan. Uh, I'm not even a vegetarian because I'm probably a bit too lazy on, on all counts. But um, this book actually would make it very easy because the, the recipes are so straightforward. There's no need for any... Um, you know, kind of elaborate ingredients that you would have sitting in, you know, you'd buy the whole lot of them and they'd be in your press until yeah. you do your out every five years and, and they're all gone off kind of thing. So um, it's really simple. Um, you know, uh, she's obviously like, like, like so many books, you know, there's snacks, there's lunches, there's sides, there's everything. Um, and there's even, you know, she's kind of adapted them. Some can be just vegetarian, some can be vegan. So. And are there um, nice pictures, Emma? That's the great, yes. the best ingredient of a good cookbook. I mean, I can even, I mean, it's quite yeah, arty, it's yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's lovely. It's, yeah. um, it's just really nice, nicely photographed. And I like Roz. I mean, um, I think she, you know, she's obviously active on social media. She's very, you know, talks she's very about honest, isn't she? In some yeah. Of her yeah, body positivity. Mm. And she just seems like a real normal kind of girl who, um, and she likes holiday in West Cork. So um, <laughs> she likes West Cork. We like her. So I would recommend it. I've, I've made a few, I've made a good few things. Corn Frishers is the one I keep going back to. Right. Um, so we all seem to like them in this house. And actually, I my four-year-old announced, has finally made the connection between animals and meat. Oh. Um, Penny has kind of dropped and actually she doesn't obviously know what vegetarian is um, but she's decided that she can't eat piggies or cows anymore so um, I'd be kind of trying. She's popular with your family I'd say. Yeah although I have I was just thinking um, I'll make yeah I'll make I'll make some things from these but something tells me she'd freak out more at the sight of um, a chickpea than she would a burger. But, <laughs> uh, so anyway mealtime is great fun here, here recently where it's, it's just, white, white bread all the way the, the ideology the ideology of veganism is great but when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of having to live on chickpeas it can be a different I story all right. there's, there's, there's plenty of choices so anyway i would recommend it it's even for its loveliness even if you never mm. make a book even if you never make anything from it i think it was around around 20 euro i think um, it's a lovely so gift because it's you know yes. it's kind of good lovely, quality lovely and it's going to appeal to obviously you know she's got a massive social media following so any of the kind of younger crew that will follow her yeah. um, of her um, and then for real life vegans if there are any out there um <laughs> well, you're 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 a vegetarian i'm vegetarian so i i i haven't sure. delved into the veganism but my sister and her husband have in the last few years and they look fantastic so oh, I'm okay okay <laughs> it's always kind of on my list of things to look into but i never you know never quite takes a lot that. of work <laughs> Take, i'd say not not when yeah. there are small children in the house. I know. I know. Maybe I'll just start with, with the veg with the with the vegetarian. But anyway, so anyway, so this yeah, this was not this was my number three. So um, and I'd recommend it. And kind of speaking of wellness, um, let's next have a listen to what Skibreen nutritionist Magella O'Neill was reading this year, and also um, actress Carol Drinkwater, who plays Helen in All Creatures, um, Great and Small, and who's a regular visitor to Bantry and who's sharing a very interesting choice with us. Hi, my name is Magella O'Neill and I'd like to tell you a little bit about one of the books that I most enjoyed reading this year. 
Uh, it's a book entitled When the Body Says No, and it was written by Gabor Mate, who is a renowned doctor, worked many years in palliative care, and most, more recently in the area of mental health and addiction. Uh, the focus of the book is on root cause, the mental health root cause of disease. And he focuses quite a bit on early childhood trauma, on uh, stress, on repressed emotion, on loneliness, as being many as one of the main factors that lay the ground for uh, diseases. He gives quite a few case histories of people suffering from um, motor neuron, Alzheimer's, cancers, different autoimmune diseases, and highlights particular types of personalities that can be more predisposed to these diseases. So from my perspective as a nutritional therapist, uh, understanding root cause is a big focus of my work. And while diet and lifestyle have a huge influence, I also know that our mental health and our attitude to life and our focus and our own self-talk has a huge part in our mental and physical well-being. My novel of 2020 is A Paragon, Colin McCann. It's a beautiful story of two men, Israeli, the other is Palestinian. Both of them have lost a child um, in the conflicts. And it's a process of healing and understanding one another, dialogue, talking. I really recommend it. Great. Well, another another few great recommendations there from Magella and Carol. And um, now just for a quick round of just one or two books I just wanted to mention. Um, I also this lovely book came out during the year and I'm really um, very keen on supporting local writers and local publishers. And we have a, a feature in this week's paper on some local books, if you want to check that out. But another one that came across my desk that I really, really liked was um, People of the Sea, which is um, a maritime history of Bera by Marcus Sullivan Valley. Now, Mark is the former arts editor of the Irish Examiner. And uh, he'd be very well known in the Bear area. And he's done some really wonderful research into um, the history of Bear, which, of course, is, you know, steeped in maritime history. And, and there's hardly a family in Bear that wouldn't have a link with the sea, you know, whether through fishing or or whatnot, um, island, the islands. Um, so, you know, he's got things like um, the Puxleys and Alley's Mines, you know, Puxley Manor is a fantastic um historical location down there so he talks about that the bear island longboat um links with wolf tone and then he has people of the sea and he has you know gosh 20 um different people who are associated with the sea from bear um and the, their stories as well so i just think that's really um it's quite it's quite a, a thick book too um so it's well worth it and i think it's available in all the bookshops down bear away and a few up at this direction as well so emma i think you had another one or two you wanted to mention um these are just on my list i haven't gotten around to buying them or reading them but if anyone's mm. listening in i'd be happy to get them so i was in i'm curious to read um Dr. Mari Cassidy's um, Beyond the Tape. Yeah, like I, I admire her. I think, she, you know, she's uh, professionally and I think, yeah, I think she's a very elegant lady and I'm just, we would be very keen to hear her story. So I've heard some good things about that as well. And I saw her interviewed somewhere relatively recently. So that's on my list. And then um, another one called The Weekend by Charlotte Webb. Now, the only reason I'm interested in that is because a writer called Lionel Shriver, who I really like. Oh, um, yes. We need to talk about Kevin. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I don't know. I just always, whatever she, whatever she says, I'll just go. Okay. <laughs> so I think I really like her book. So um, so The Weekend, yeah, I think it's like an easy read, but it's, um, you know, not, not too... Is it a, a murder mystery or romance? or? <laughs> something um about um older women who are you know the relevance of older women or women beginning to feel irrelevant i think it's kind of the theme or something like that you're preempting I, something I, there I, I about know, <laughs> look it's a lot of middle age recently like, early yeah. days yes <laughs> sounds so, a bit like beaches maybe <laughs> that movie um, so yeah um maybe that was why i was subliminally attracted to that one as well as just about um yeah clinging to your, clinging to clinging to, to your youth like something like that so <laughs> they were my, they were my two i think yeah so Mar mary cassidy and, and the weekend for some later reading 
Right. Um, and now one other one I just wanted to mention in passing, which um, I mentioned a few weeks ago because I interviewed Shane Ross on this podcast. And I have to say it was one of my favorite interviews because he is such a mischief maker, that guy, and uh, and such a charmer with it. And um, he has some great descriptive passages in the book. I read one out on the podcast about Fine Gael and about Fianna Fáil. And one line was, they're savages in a savage world, which I thought was brilliant, which you could probably say about any politician. But um, so his book is called In Bed with the Blue Shirts. And it's it really chronicles his last few years in the Dáil up right up until to this summer actually and the pandemic and Fine Gael's fantastic response to the pandemic which kind of got them back in everybody's good books having been a, having had a disastrous election but if you're into politics at all or even just want a funny light read about politics it's quite a light read really um, and Michael Collins features very heavily in it as well our own Michael Collins the TD um, I, I really do recommend that one and that's in all the bookshops now at the minute it's getting quite, quite a lot of um, take up there um, and speaking of politics politicians we now have some recommendations from two politicians the aforementioned Michael Collins and also from the former politician Fine Gael's Jim Daly. Uh, I don't get much time uh, to read books but I certainly did uh, take time out to read a, a, a fabulous book this year it was for Eva uh, written by Vera Toomey a woman who has struggled so so hard down through the years to get medicinal cannabis for her daughter for to save her life basically and for medicinal cannabis for the people in this country who are suffering greatly it's a fabulous read and well worth a buy for this Christmas. Hi uh, Jim Daly here uh, the best read I enjoyed in 2020 was without a doubt Graham Norton's home stretch uh, the, his ability to capture the characters of rural Ireland, the small town Ireland, the tragedy and the traumas is, is just unique. A fantastic West Cork talent. Uh, home stretch by Graham Norton. So very good recommendations there from Michael and Jim. And let's not forget all the great lo- local books that are out on sale now at the moment. Um, so please do remember to support local. If, you can, if you're not buying a local book, then buy your book in a local bookshop to keep us all for going sure. for another while. Definitely, definitely something we need to keep in mind. So another local woman, um, Gwornia O'Keefe, joined us during the year here. And I was curious to hear what the chief executive of the Ludgate Digital Hub was reading. And here she tells us. Two books to recommend. One is Dr. Tara Shine, a Kinsale-based environmental scientist, How to Save Your Planet, uh, One Object at a Time. And the second book, another West Cork lady, Louise O'Neill's new book. Enjoy. Very interesting. So we also had a lot of talk about environmental issues this year on the podcast, from plastics to climate change and recycling. So we asked two of our guest activists to give us an idea of what they were delving into this year. So starting with Abby O'Callaghan Platt of Voice Ireland and followed by climate change activist um, Skibreen's Alicia Joy O'Sullivan. Hi, uh, this is Abby O'Callaghan Platt from Voice Ireland. Um, my favourite book of the year is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everista. Um, it was recommended to me by Trish Kerr and Kerr's Bookshop, and it won the Booker Prize in 2019, uh, jointly with Margaret Atwood's The Testament. Um, yeah, it's really great. It's a story of, I think, 12 different people, and it's each um, like little stories told from their perspective of their overlapping lives. Uh, it's mainly about black, uh, women in the UK um, but it's uh, so it's a lot about racism of course but there's also all of the different intersections with um, education and class and sexuality and uh, gender so it makes it really interesting and one of my favorite things about it is the fact that it often tells the perspective of one woman and then it tells the perspective of her mother which um, I just think it's fascinated all the different uh, challenges that they've faced uh, throughout different points in time and how the world has changed around them and the different challenges they face with that. Um, so, yeah, I found that really fascinating. And also um, just the way that people can only see their own perspective, uh, the way that they perceive others, and then it shows the story from this other person's perspective, say the mother or the daughter or the sister um, and although so many of them have the same lived experiences they all perceive it differently so um, yep it's a great book. My favourite book I've read this year is The Secret Barrister. Uh, It was written anonymously and it's about stories of the law and how it's broken. 
Great. Well, that's a, that's a new one on me. I must check that one out from Alicia. Uh, so if you want more recommendations for books and for viewing, listen back to some of our podcasts during the year, because the last question we asked everybody on, on almost all the podcasts was, what are you watching or what are you reading during the pandemic? And we got some really good recommendations there. So if books really aren't your thing and you'd like to watch something interesting on maybe Netflix or a good movie, um, just check in check in with some of the podcasts. They're all still available on our southernstar.ie website under the COVID-19 tab or just search Southern Star Coronavirus Podcast. And if you don't want to watch the video version, you can pick it up on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, Acast, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. So just before we finish up, we, myself and Tawan would really like to thank everyone who contributed to this podcast this year, not just this week, but since last April, gave us um, their time so willingly and happily um, to share with us and with you. So thank you all. So we have one more podcast to share before the holidays. A look back at some of the most memorable moments and one to enjoy, especially if you have some downtime coming up. So that'll be live on all the usual platforms from next week. And now, Emma, I think we have some music coming up you're going to introduce. To round things off, we've got a lovely song from Balnadee based Martin Leahy, who has composed his song for Kirsty McCall to mark the 20th anniversary of her death in December 2000. So until the next time, it's goodbye from myself, Emma Connolly. And from me, Siobhan Crum. Bye. Bye. The water's edge, you're cupping your hands. Engines roar out on the wind. An empty piece alone on the strand. Where none of the broken things mend. God's fair earth, you've travelled all night. A soothing low light at the door The heart beats in the eternal mind Your songs ring out evermore And tonight there's a melody I hear your voice come through the dark Oh shine, sing out heavenly Sing out the fading spark The source of life, of grace and of love Will bury all those away A winter's day all bright enough The swell, the boat made its way The picture bright lives on in my mind It comes up for air and enough Out of my path you push him aside An angel floats round in his house And tonight there's a melody I hear your voice come through the dark Oh, shine, sing out heavenly Sing out the fading smile I've seen old ships lay still in the rain Those things could I one day be Gentle chase to make prayers in vain Comfort our deep misery The lines I sang out, the strongest of all Were the ones I did not believe Through radio waves I hear you to me you